Hey, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your interest. Uh, please know that all of the content included in this video, as well as all my videos, is uh, primarily educational in its nature. It is not meant to provide specific medical advice. If you have any specific questions about the healing after your surgery or how to care for uh, your flap, you definitely need to contact uh, your surgeon's office to get direct uh, medical care that's appropriate for you. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, Dr. Michael Bowman here with Southwest Virginia ENT and Facial Plastics. Going to do a little video today about uh, facial reconstruction using pedicled flaps. Um, in particular, this is primarily for my patients who have had these flaps done and may have some concerns or questions about how to um, dress the, the wounds postoperatively. So uh, as a little bit of a warning, um, the second part of this video will definitely show a, um, a graphic detail of how these flaps look. It is definitely a little bit unusual, but um, I'll throw some before and after photographs in to show you why we might want to do this. But uh, basically how these flaps work, there's two main ones that we use. The first is a paramedian forehead flap that comes borrowing tissue from up here. And we use that to primarily cover um, defects on the, the far part of the nose. And then usually for this little area of the nose here, we'll borrow a piece of skin from the cheek. But basically what you do is you lift up that tissue and leave it attached here or here and then turn it around and use it to fill in the hole um, where the cancer was. And so then as a consequence, you have to leave the skin connected from here to here or from here to here uh, for about three weeks. And during that time, this, the blood supply is growing up from the nose into the skin that you've moved down there. After three weeks, you can go and trim the connection and set everything down and make it look really nice and pretty. Um, however, in the meantime, uh, it looks very strange because you've got this little band of tissue uh, connecting the two areas. So on a daily basis, um, I like to change a little piece of uh, uh, Vaseline impregnated gauze around that to try to keep that tissue nice and moist. We don't want it to get dried out or infected. And so it's a little bit strange because you've got this bridge of tissue and there's nothing really like it in most people's normal experience. So I wanted to kind of show how this works. It is it is weird, but it's not really difficult once you kind of see what's going on and get the hang of it. So. Um, at the end of this, please feel free to ask me any questions or concerns. I'd love to hear your comments and, um, please let me know if, uh, what other videos you might like to see in the future. Thanks. So up next is a quick close up of a pretty extensive nasal defect, uh, before and after, um, it was repaired with a paramedian forehead flap, just like the patient you're going to see at the end of the video. So hopefully this will give you an idea of why we might go through all the trouble to uh, do a big reconstruction like this. Thanks. So, uh, Dr. Bowman here, we are showing a dressing change on someone that's had a, a paramedian forehead flap for a nose reconstruction. So, um, our uh, nice patient here had a, a, a large basal cell on the front of her nose and we had to, to get enough skin to cover up the hole. We had to borrow the skin from her forehead. So it leaves a little pedicle of uh, skin that we have to leave in place for a few weeks. And so, uh, at least on a daily basis, we want to change out this little bandage here. And so this is a tutorial for uh, my other patients to hopefully help understand how this works. It's a little strange because you've never done it before, but it's not too difficult once you get the hang of it. So what we're gonna do is uh, unfold the bandage here that we put on at surgery and gently tease that out. And everything right now looks just fine for being where we are. We're going to take this new one a little t uh, and slide it back under here with a pair of tweezers. For your ones at home that aren't sterilized, just use a little piece of um, a little alcohol dip to keep them nice and clean. And we'll wrap that over there and wrap that. Actually, I'm going to trim that up a little bit. Doesn't have to be that long. Shoot back towards me here. There we go. That's all there is to it. So we're just looking to keep this from getting dried out. But as you can see, it only takes a minute once you get the hang of it, and that's all you have to do. So thank you for checking this out. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments down below.